In this video, we're going to look at electrocyclic reactions in more detail. And recall that these are reactions where a pi system cyclizes to form a ring, or a ring opens to form a contiguous pi system, like a butadiene, hexatriene, or other conjugate polyene. The position of equilibrium here depends primarily on ring strength. So for example, when we're forming a six-membered ring, that six-membered ring is pretty happy. This tends to favor the products. But when we're forming a four-membered cyclobutene ring, that's going to be heavily strained, and this will favor the reactants, the 1,3-butadiene. Interesting things happen in electrocyclic reactions when the termini of the pi system in the open form bears substituents, or the saturated carbons within the ring bear substituents. This generally means we're dealing with stereocenters, right? We've got alkenes with EZ or cis-trans issues, and we've got cis-trans issues in the ring or the, the closed ring form as well. So there are distinct stereochemical outcomes under thermal and photochemical conditions for orbital symmetry reasons similar to the cycloaddition case. So the conditions, thermal versus photochemical, plays a role as well as the length of the pi system plays a role in the stereochemical outcome. First, let's see what the various possible stereochemical outcomes are. And let's start with the case of 6 pi electrocyclization. So here we've got a hexatriene with two methyl groups on the end. And so, and, and more generally, this is a 4n plus 2 number of electrons involved. When we heat this substrate, we end up, and both double bonds, by the way, both alkenes on the end have the E configuration. When we heat, we end up with a product with the methyl groups cis to each other. But when we photo excite the hexatriene, the observed product contains the methyl groups in a trans relationship. And this product is now chiral, and so it will form, as well as its enantiomer in a racemic mixture, plus EN here indicates that enantiomer that's formed. If we switch the configuration of one of the alkenes, so that we have an EZ hexatriene as the starting material. Well, now heating leads to the trans product, but photochemical excitation leads to the cis product. Now let's think about a four-atom pi system, a butadiene with two methyl groups on the end. And more generally, 4 pi is an example of a 4n number of electrons, right? 4, 8, 12, etc. In this case, if we start with the EE -E isomer, the trans-trans isomer of starting material, and we heat, we end up with the trans isomer of product, which is chiral, along with its enantiomer as a racemic mixture. And contrast this result with the thermal result and the EE -E isomer of the hexatriene. We get cis in this case and trans in this case when we've taken away two pi electrons in cis. But under photochemical excitation, there's a toggle that happens, and we end up with the cis isomer as the observed product. And naturally, if we switch one of the configurations, E and Z now, the cis-trans isomer of butadiene, well, thermal reaction leads to the cis isomer and photochemical reaction to the trans isomer. So what the results show us on this slide, first of all, is that the reaction is stereospecific. That under a given set of conditions, if I switch, for example, the E to the Z, I go from the trans to the cis isomer. And a similar idea applies to the 6 pi case. If I switch an E to a Z under thermal conditions, I go from the cis isomer to the trans isomer. So the reaction is stereospecific in that way. But it's also stereoselective for cis versus trans in a particular way, and we see photochemical excitation acting as a toggle similar to the way we did for cycloadditions. What's going on here? Well, we need frontier orbital analysis and orbital symmetry to really appreciate what's going on. So let's talk about how we think about orbital symmetry in the context of electrocyclic reactions. And here are the two results that the two major results under thermal conditions that we saw in the previous slide. Hexatriene is converted into a cis product, while a butadiene is converted into a trans product under, under thermal conditions. And to appreciate what's happening here, we first want to recognize that a new sigma bond is being formed between the two ends of the pi systems in both cases, and that sigma bond is associated with a sigma bonding orbital, which is filled. The highest filled molecular orbital of the pi system in the reactant 
needs to transform smoothly into that sigma bonding orbital associated with the new sigma bond. And so what we can recognize here is that the highest occupied molecular orbital of the pi system, which looks like this, this is something we could get, for example, from Hewlett's or Huckel molecular orbital calculations. The ends of this HOMO need to rotate so that constructive overlap occurs between the newly bonded atoms, and we end up with a sigma bonding orbital. So these two p orbitals in particular on the end of the HOMO need to rotate so that constructive overlap happens. And in order to do that, we can see that, for example, this unshaded lobe is going to need to rotate this way. This is going to pull the R group down, and this unshaded lobe needs to rotate up this way, and this is also going to pull that R group down. And if we think in terms of clockwise and counterclockwise, this lobe is rotating in a clockwise manner, and this lobe is rotating in a counterclockwise manner. That's why this type of rotation is called disrotatory. The two ends of the pi system are rotating in opposite directions, one clockwise and one counterclockwise. And in the case of a hexatriene where we start out with a trans-trans situation, notice that both alkenes on the ends here are trans, this is going to lead to a cis product. But the reaction is stereospecific. Keep in mind that if we, for example, changed this trans configuration to a cis configuration with the R group right about here, well then we would end up with the trans product. The general conclusion here is that for six pi electrons, thermal electrocyclization happens in a disrotatory manner. And by the way, an analogous argument can be made for the opening going in the reverse direction. The reverse direction ring opening is also disrotatory for six pi electrons. In the four pi case, the situation changes, and this is because the shape and phasing of the highest occupied molecular orbital in the butadiene changes. Now we've got, notice, opposite phasing or shading on the two ends of the pi system. And for these lobes to rotate such that there's constructive orbital overlap in here, well, that's going to involve rotation in the same direction. So for example, this lobe rotates down, this lobe rotates up. Actually, to match the sigma bonding orbital, I'm going to reverse this and show this rotating down and this rotating up. However, it's the same in both cases, equivalent analysis, equivalent conclusions. Notice clockwise rotation of that right-hand lobe and clockwise rotation of that left-hand lobe to establish constructive overlap in the middle between these two shaded lobes. Because both lobes are rotating in the same direction, this is called con-rotatory. So 4 pi electrocyclization under thermal conditions happens in a con-rotatory manner. And in this case, with two trans alkenes on the ends of the pi system, we end up with a trans product via rotation of this R group sort of upward as the carbon rotates in a clockwise manner, and rotation of this R group downward as this carbon also rotates around in a clockwise manner. Under photochemical conditions, as we've seen, we get a toggle. Photochemical 6-pi cyclization is a con-rotatory process, and to see that, we only need to realize that photoexcitation converts the former LUMO into the HOMO, and so now, not the HOMO, but what we've called the HOMO star needs to transform into a sigma bonding orbital. The HOMO star, for hexatriene, has the same shape as the LUMO, so this shape in purple is the LUMO of ground state hexatriene and the HOMO star of photoexcited hexatriene. And notice, now we have a con-rotatory situation with both lobes rotating clockwise, this is clockwise and that's clockwise, to create constructive overlap between the two ends of the pi system. This leads to the trans product in a case when we start with the trans-trans alkene. And you can see that here. Imagine this R group rotating down, this R group rotating upward as the rotation takes place. Naturally, butadiene, the 4 pi case, is going to be disrotatory under photochemical conditions. And this is because, again, the LUMO of ground state butadiene is now the HOMO star in the photoexcited molecule. And the HOMO star, or LUMO, has, of the ground state molecule has this shape. And now we're in a disrotatory situation with this lobe rotating clockwise, and this lobe rotating counterclockwise to establish constructive overlap between the two newly single-bonded atoms. And this rotates this R group upward, 
and rotates the other R group upward into a cis orientation when we start out with a trans-trans alkene. You can imagine again, if we switch the configuration of one of these alkenes, for example, moving this R here into a cis orientation, that would lead to the trans product because the reaction is stereospecific. To summarize, we've noticed here that under thermal conditions, 6 pi electrocyclizations and 4n plus 2 electrocyclizations more generally occur in a disrotatory manner, while 4n electrocyclizations occur in a con-rotatory manner based on orbital symmetry arguments. Under photochemical conditions, the opposite holds true. 6 pi and other 4n plus 2 photocyclizations occur in a con-rotatory manner, while 4 pi and other 4n electrocyclizations occur in a disrotatory manner under photochemical conditions.